Good morning, Heritage Academy. Our song for this morning is number six or five sixty five. Maybe. Thank you. Maybe, yeah, right. Maybe up one a little bit, so I'm a little further away. Yeah. Thank you. Good morning. Okay. I can see. Let's have prayer together. Father in heaven, as we begin our morning together as a school family, we pray that you would bless our time together, that your Holy Spirit would dwell with us, that you would guide us in, um, in our thoughts and in our um, conversation together. And we just thank you, Lord, for the sunshine and for the many ways that you bless us that um, sometimes we're so busy to not notice. So I pray you open our eyes to help us to see your love and your care for us this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so um, I'm going to actually set this down here if I can. I don't want to be away. Okay. Make sure I'm far enough away. All right, so our scripture verse kind of will probably be our scripture verse for the week is Hebrews 5.13. So um, would someone read that for me? Okay, Austin and then Devin. Okay, so um, I don't know about you, but when I first heard that verse, it was, it was really very interesting to think that, that God is so um, into details that those little things mattered because even the details of my life are hard to surround for myself, so I just can't fathom those kinds of details and the things that he cares about and cares for. But... Um, it also made me think about some things I wanted to start off sharing this week with you. Um, I grew up in, uh, well, for the most of what I can remember mostly, I mean, I remembered things before then, but formidable times, I guess, in Florida. And, uh, and so these were um, 
a pretty common occurrence around. I mean, actually, when you live in Florida, there's really not anything else but these, right? Um, I mean, there's some lower ones and there's some middle ones, but then there's these towering um, palm, uh, coconut trees or palm trees. And um, I was just really um, taken aback when I saw um, in California a whole row of them down a street, these huge ones. How many of you have seen these before, like in real life? These really tall ones, right? And I remember as a kid seeing those thinking, I mean, what would you think? Let me just ask. What kind of things when you saw that or, you know, when you, when you saw them for the first time, what did you think? Climbing all the way to the top. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't really quite, I mean, that would be kind of fun, but they're prickly on the outside, you know what I mean? They have these kinds of um, scales, for lack of another word, that kind of go vertically like this, right? So, you know, I climbed a lot of trees, but not that kind of tree um, would be a little scary. But yeah, climbing all the way to the top so you can see the view, right? Because they're so tall. Um, what else? Anybody? What came to your mind? Maybe I'm the only one that, that's thought about it. Okay, so let me ask you this question. How does this, does this tree start out this way? No, I mean, we know that, right? Well, I mean, we remember learning those in elementary school where they start from, how do they start? A seed, okay, so uh, someone said a seed, someone said a seed, what kind of seed? A what? A coconut, like that. How many of you have had a fresh coconut? Oh my. I'm not, my grandmother used to make a cake and it was pretty, mind you. It was layered, she did it beautifully. It had these nice even layers. I can never do that. I've cut them and they kind of end up lopsided, you know. So I have to kind of compensate for the frosting in the middle and the whole thing. And, it would be white. It's a white cake with a white frosting. And she would um, put coconut on the outside, dried coconut, you know? And it was pretty because she would kind of smash it all around and stick it to the sides and everything. And it was so pretty, but you know, I didn't like coconut. So as pretty as it was, it wasn't um, appetizing to eat, just pretty to look at for me. But a fresh coconut, crack that guy open, and on the inside, that thick, usually kind of fleshy pulp, right? That's a little hard, but it's so good. Yeah, some of you are saying yes, some of you are like, yeah, no. Um, how many of you like the water to drink out of a coconut? Yeah, you know, I'm trying. It's an acquired taste, I think. I don't know, I'm trying to like it, trying to learn to like it, but you know, it's coming. I think it's an acquired taste. But um, I mean, this guy, when you look at him in real life, is he like this? Or like this? Yeah, like this, right? And he actually comes with this hard thing on the outside, right? And I didn't know that because I grew up as a city girl, right? And so everything that you get, you get at the grocery store, and it all grows like it looks at the grocery store, right? So if you would ask me where peanuts came from, I would say from a tree, um, you know, things like that, because I just assumed right? Didn't really know. It comes in a bag at the store. And, um, but this is not the way they come either, right? They come like with this big green fibrous outside. Have you seen those before? And when people have to like get that off, it's really hard. I mean, these are hard, right? I mean, like when my kids were little and I would get one at the grocery store and you would kind of get a screwdriver and you'd knock it through the holes, right? And then you drain the milk and then you'd get a hammer and you'd really crack it and Doug would have to go like outside because it sometimes could just shatter, right? And go into pieces everywhere. So, um, but this fibrous thing on the outside, I mean, this is the way you buy it, right? But somebody took all the effort to take that big fibrous thing off the outside. And so when I say it's, and you know, when you've seen them, when they're this big, they're really not this big, they're really like this big. So what do you think I thought about when I saw these? Say again? 
Say it loud. Yeah, that's exactly right. What happens when those guys fall? That's a long way down, and I'm at the bottom, right? Well, how, how do you keep from being, you know, like, destroyed from those things when they fall like that, right? Or, you know, do you have time to run? Do you hear it crack? You know, that kind of thing. So um, they were very interesting to me. I always thought if I could sit afar off and watch long enough, it would fall. It never happened. Yeah, never got to see one actually fall. But um, pretty amazing at these, these giants. Um, and then the seed, the seed that, that created it, that it came from. Let me ask you this question. What's this? Anybody have an idea? What's unusual about it? Yeah, the roots like that, right? You can see the roots on the outside of the tree. Usually we see the roots on the, you know, underneath. Like if we see, and many of you have seen them when we've had tornadoes, right? Or hurricanes and trees have fallen over and you see the root structure underneath it, right? Sometimes you see these mammoth trees and then how big are their roots? You know, like this long, right? You see the back end of it and you're like, that's all that was holding that up, you know? Very shallow roots. But this guy, you see all of his roots, not all of them necessarily, but a lot of them on the outside of, of the tree, right? Anybody know what the name of this tree is called? It's a banyan tree. B-A-N-Y-A-N, banyan tree. And if you look around the chapel and in some places around the school, I kind of like trees. I don't really know why. They just kind of are, are really interesting to me in the variety and, um, and really the way they grow, which we're kind of talking about this morning. So I'm wa wondering if you know what the, where this guy comes from. I mean, this is one tree, right? This is not a bunch. This is one tree. It kind of looks like a bunch of trees, but... That's all of its roots that have gone down and, and really created, you know, a bigger tree. But it starts off like that. Now, that's a pile of them. I kind of had a hard time finding one that's just one seed, but that's about the size of a watermelon seed, to give you an idea, a little black watermelon seed. That's, that, that seed made that that's pretty crazy, don't you think? I'm not sure I understand how that makes that. But what about that? Have you seen those before? How many of you seen those in real life? Have you really? Is that really cool? I've never seen one in real life. I mean, I've seen them in pictures like this. And I know, you know, you've taken pictures and you're like, that picture does not do this justice, right? I've done lots of those with like pictures of the moon coming, rising. You know, I think I had Hannah um, Mortensen last week when there was a huge moon and I'm like, quick, can you get a picture of it? You know, it was gorgeous. And um, you look at the picture and you go, yeah, that's not quite the way it looks like in my mind. You know, it didn't quite translate. So I look at these and I think, does it really look like that? I mean, it's really like that. Does this picture do it justice? You know, it's huge. I mean, a car, granted, this is not a semi driving through this, this tree, right? But it's still a car. It's huge. I mean, how many of us, you think, if we held hands, could um, stand around this tree and connect? I mean, I don't know. 10? 20? It's just ginormous to me. And this is a redwood, right? This is a redwood. What's another tree kind of grows in this area that's like it? Anybody have an idea? A sequoia. I don't have a picture of a sequoia. But yes, a sequoia is ginormous too. I mean, huge, these things. And you know what? He starts off like that. I mean, there's a finger in there to kind of give you an idea of its true size. But that becomes that. It's kind of the reason why I think I really like trees, because this to this is absolutely crazy. I mean, if you didn't know it, if you hadn't 
seen it, if there weren't people that could observe it, I don't think I could believe that that would ever become that. It's absolutely incredible. How does that happen? What is in that tiny seed, this guy, that says, I'm going to be this guy? It's amazing. Our scripture this morning is talking about some of that. And I want us to read this together. Can I have maybe a person read um, a page at the time? And this is um, founding councils on um, creation. So anybody that would read this page? And then we'll just kind of flow through. Anybody? Just start. Next person. Okay, I'll read this one. He wants subjects whom he can trust in any part of the universe. But if he were to compel any to be saved, he would still have to exercise force to retain them in the kingdom. Christ came to preach deliverance to the captives, and he does not propose to deliver them to bondage. But when anyone wants salvation, no matter how small or how weak he is, no matter how insignificant he may be in the eyes of the world, like that tiny seed, even though he be regarded no more than the grass which is trodden underfoot, God can work wonders with him. If God so clothes the grass of the fields, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, which much more will he clothe with power the men whom he has made in his own image? If they but submit to him, that promise that he will clothe us does not refer exclusively to clothing our bodies. The life is more than meat and the body than raiment. If he gives us that which is of infinite value, so the promise that he will much more clothe us than the grass refers as well to the garment of salvation and the robe of righteousness with which we are to be clothed. We are that seed. He doesn't see that seed. The power which works so wonderfully in the tiny blade of grass or that tiny seed will work still more mightily in the man who trusts the Lord. Consider the lilies of the field and how they grow. I have said that this is written for our encouragement and our growth in grace. As they grow, so must we. The growth of the lily is but an illustration of the Christian's growth in grace. That seed is us, is our potential. But God doesn't see the seed when he looks at you and me. He doesn't see this. He sees that. Does the tree think about it? Does he have to do anything? He just does what he knows to do. He just grows. That's our responsibility to just grow, to grow in grace, to trust that he's got you. That's our verse. Consider the lilies of the field. Do they, do they toil? Why do we? 
You know, and, it, and I don't know about you, but there's a lot of uncertainty around us. A lot of struggles, a lot of people that are afraid. And it's hard not to be caught up in that. But God reminds us, you know what? This is you. And this is you. This is what I see. This is who you are. Trust me when you feel like this. Because, you, you know, there is an in-between, but sometimes we don't see that in-between. And it's hard to even wrap our mind around this or this or this. But he has a plan. And in every one of us that started out like this, and even like that, you will be this. We just have to grow in grace and faith. Let's pray. Father in heaven, as we um, contemplate this grace, this incredible grace, this love that you have shared with us, that you've, you've told us, listen, I'm not um, seeing you as you see yourself. I'm not seeing you as you begin, but I'm seeing you as I intend you to be. Lord, we praise you that you give us a choice, that you do not force us, but that you love us enough to woo us to be the mighty tree, the mighty person, the mighty warrior you plan us to be, even when we feel at that tiny, tiny seed. Lord, the words aren't ours. The, the, the strength is not our own, but it is within us because you promised that it is, and that's the way you created us to be. So, Lord, may each one of us today, as we woke up, any of us feel like that tiny little seed, strengthen us and uphold us today that we might know that you are with us and that with each decision we make, with each step we take today, we become more and more like that tree. A mighty young man or a young woman of faith by grace. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing 92, 92 together.